What's up gamers? Today I'm going to be showing you how to install a virtual machine to play retro Japanese video games for PC, games that were made for operating systems prior to Windows 7. These games can be kind of hard to run on modern systems like Windows 10 and beyond, um, even Windows 7 at times, so this is what this tutorial will be for. So it's going to be pretty short and simple. I'm just going to go over everything that you need to know to get this stuff working. So we'll start with getting the virtual machine itself. So VirtualBox is a virtual machine that you want to use. I use Windows, so to get this, uh, you just want to go to Windows Hosts here. This will start downloading the VirtualBox setup. Now, I already have the setup installed, so I'll show you basically what to do with it from there in a moment. And you want to find the operating system that is best compatible with your game. So for me, I play a lot of games from like 2006 and prior. So Windows XP is kind of all encompassing. It'll take care of games that work with Windows 2000, 98, etc. That's just an all around good version for this sort of thing. So, um, go ahead and install this from archive.org iso image is here the serial code is here everything you need is pretty much right there and good to go and then you also want to find you know whatever game that you're trying to play for in my situation it's going to be chobits typing so i have chobits typing here uh, and i'll be ready to set everything up in a second but first we'll go ahead and set up the virtual machine so you just want to run the exe that you downloaded off of the virtual box website um, it's going to take you through a setup wizard. Uh, I already have it set up, so you know it's not going to show accurately for me, but it's pretty simple. You just hit next on everything, and then it'll be set up and good to go. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and open up VirtualBox here. So whenever it is installed, it should look something like this. So it's going to be this Windows XP is going to be gone. It won't be here. It'll just be tools. Um, so what you want to do is you want to hit machine and new, and then you want to call it whatever your operating system is. So for me, it's Windows XP. I'll just call it XP2 because I already have an XP set up. Um, and it'll tell you where you want to put the virtual machine itself. I leave ISO image blank for now because it's just a little easier for me to set up this way, but I hit next and I'm just going to want about, um, 2048 megabytes uh, for the base memory so the RAM basically it's about two gigabytes of RAM that's perfectly fine for most of these games I'm just gonna leave processors at one um, 10 gigabytes of a hard drive once again pretty much okay for these games usually they're really small doesn't matter so I'm gonna ahead and hit next here and from here we're just gonna go ahead and hit finish so now we start the virtual machine. You want to double click it here and it's going to start the setup process to setting up Windows XP. So let's see. So it's going to ask you, uh, where's your ISO? We need an ISO to know what operating system to install. So that's when I like to go and find my ISO. So right here, the one I got from archive.org, I just click mountain retry boot. And now it's getting into the Windows setup. So you can just dismiss this box. It's not important. There we go. So just go ahead and hit enter. F8 to agree to the terms. Enter on the unpartitioned space. Enter to format using NTFS. Pretty much just enter through all those options. And it'll start setting up the drive and formatting it and everything. The virtual drive. So I'll go ahead and just cut this part out because it's kind of just waiting for the loading to be done, for the setup to be done, copying files and all that good stuff. So I'll go ahead and skip forward to whenever we're actually setting up Windows itself. All right, so it's going to say that the computer will reboot. This isn't your actual computer. This is just the virtual machine that's going to be rebooting. So after this timer is up, it's just going to restart the virtual machine for you. And then you're going to actually be doing the Windows XP um, setup itself. So that kind of is what installed the operating system. Don't press any key here. Uh, you want it to actually boot into XP. So once you see the XP loading screen, you're pretty much on the right path. So now we are at the Windows XP setup. So this is where 
the options that you select matter for being able to run a lot of these old Japanese games. So it's just installing devices right now. Uh, your mouse, your mouse might freeze. Um, just let that little loading screen go through. You'll get control again. But once the devices are installed, it should take you to the language settings. So this is where your options are very important. So follow along here. You want to hit customize here. Uh, you have to go to languages and install files for East Asian languages. This will be Chinese, Japanese, Korean. And I also install the ones for Arabic, Armenian, Georgian, etc. I just get those as well, because why not? Uh, so you just go ahead and hit apply, and it will install these languages for you. All right, so once they are applied, then you go over to regional options. Um, let's see here. So regional options, and you click Japanese on this list here so right here for the personal formats that you have this option affects how some programs format numbers currencies date and time uh, so you want Japanese to be the default here and then under advanced I also change it to Japanese so here this is for non unicode programs enables non unicode programs to display menus and dialogues in their native language so this will mean like mostly the installers that you're going to be downloading for these games or that you have on discs um, if you don't have that option enabled then they'll show up as gibberish or broken text and it kind of messes everything up it also prevents some games from running at all so make sure japanese is set under advanced and under regional options uh, so that's all you really need to do you can leave the default input language as English or whatever your native language is if it shows up here usually it's only going to show with English and Japanese since that's what you enabled but that's pretty much fine you hit next you can name your system whatever you like and put your product key here so let me go ahead and grab that so this is the same product key that is listed on the actual archive.org link so it'll work for pretty much everyone it's an offline key so it doesn't matter if it's used on multiple systems so once you've gotten your product key and you hit next you can name your computer whatever you want I just leave it default and I don't care about the date and time so we just hit next again and then it installs the network settings so this is just gonna be for like internet based stuff I keep it the same because you might need some sort of network options for some games and things like that most of the time you don't since they're all offline at this point but I just leave it on anyway you can adjust your network settings in VirtualBox so I just let this keep going and installing So we'll go ahead and close this out while we're waiting. And I'll also go ahead and skip forward here as well because pretty much this is just saving our settings and setting up the actual profile for us. So I'll skip forward to once we are ready to go. It's going to reboot the virtual machine again after the setup. Once again, don't press any key, just let it go till the Windows XP screen. Now that we're on the XP screen, um, you just hit OK. It's just going to adjust the resolution, make it a bit bigger. That's perfectly fine. OK, so now we're at the final part of the Windows XP setup. This is just going to be a couple simple options for your accounts and your PC, your virtual PC. I don't turn on the firewall um, or automatic update stuff. I just leave that off because obviously XP is dead. It's not supported. I'm just going to check your internet connectivity. Mine may be offline, uh, but yes. You want to hit yes here. You want to keep the network options available you don't want to register with Microsoft because it doesn't matter it's dead um, you can just put whatever for your username 
and then you'll be basically ready to go. So now, it's going to put you into XP, and you'll see this uh, keyboard option here. So down here, you can change your language between English and Japanese for your keyboard. Um, I just leave it on English because I don't need to type Japanese. I just need to play the games. So the next thing you do to make sure that you can get your files off of your main PC to the virtual machine is you go to devices and then insert guest edition CD image. This is what allows you to add folders and such from your main PC to your virtual machine. So then once you've enabled that, you go into my computer and then this virtual box guest editions will show up um, as a device with removable storage so you just go ahead and run that uh, just doesn't matter defaults are all fine here you might hear a little bit of a sound effect and it's gonna ask you to reboot that's fine just go ahead and do that you need this reboot to make sure that you can actually share folders between your host machine and your virtual machine so let it reboot let it do its thing applying some new settings this might take a moment all right so now that we have the guest editions enabled now we can enable file sharing so you can go back into devices shared folders shared folder settings and here is where you add the folders you want to be on your virtual machine itself so I'm gonna add the folder path that I made for the games that I was trying to install so I'll go here and I'm trying to play Chobits typing and the Chobits accessory disc but you want to click auto mount so that it actually shows up in the devices on the virtual machine and then hit OK now, some of these games um, might try to connect to the internet. They might require you to install software like Shockwave or QuickTime that have security vulnerabilities that would open you up to um, security risks, even if you're only using the virtual machine. So the way to avoid that is to just disconnect your virtual machine from the internet entirely. Uh, while I'm on the screen, I go to Network change it from attached to NAT to not attached and then you go down to advanced and disconnect the ethernet cable so now once you do this uh, and you can also open up your main virtual box settings here and go into tools remove the networks from here as well make sure there's nothing uh, that'll make sure that you're totally disconnected from the internet between your host machine and your main machine so you won't really be open to any of those risks now so that you want to do that and then you want to go back into my computer and scroll down to the network devices. And this will be the folder that you added to the file sharing system. So now you can see I have Chobit's accessory disk and Chobit's typing here. So we'll go ahead and open Chobit's typing just to see if we can get everything running. Um, so we'll go down and open up the installer here. It's going to want me to install these two things QuickTime. Uh, I'm just going to install this like normal, just agree, 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 QuickTime Pro, sure, I don't need Internet Explorer plugin. So this is just installing everything for QuickTime. I just hit next on everything here, it doesn't matter to me. And there we go, so it's going to pop up with a bunch of QuickTime crap, it's fine. Uh, so we got that, and now we get the on to codec for this game. This is exclusive to this game, pretty much. And um, since I already have the folders and such, I don't need to install the game. Now that I have everything, I can just play it. So I'll scroll down to Chobit's typing here. And now we're able to play the game. So this pretty much should work for most retro PC games from Japan. But uh, it may not, so we'll just go ahead and make sure that it actually works here. So we were able to get into the game itself. We can hit play. And now we have the typing game available. Oh, there you go.
hopefully this helped. Hopefully this works for games other than just Chobits typing. Um, if you're trying to download or play a retro Japanese PC game and it's giving you issues, try this method. Hopefully it works. And let me know in the comments if you ran into any issues trying this with other games or anything like that. And maybe we'll look into seeing how to get those games work in particular. But thanks for watching, gamers. Happy gaming. And I hope everything works for you guys.